Hi, my name is uh, Michael Fink, and I'm a product manager for the Google Chart Tools team. Uh, Amit and I flew over from uh, Israel, we're part of the Israeli office, and uh, what I'd like to talk to about today is uh, Google's unified approach for creating uh, dynamic charts on the web. Now, uh, if you want to uh, follow this talk, what I strongly recommend is type in that a tiny URL, that's 99TMXI, and we'll try to make this talk as interactive as possible. So if you have your laptops open, just type in that, your, that, type in that URL, and what you should essentially land on is this wave. And what we have on this wave is the moderator page. If you want to put, put, put up your questions there and vote for them, I think that will be a, a good time to do that. And um, I have here the link for a chart tools, which is our, a, our splash page. I think that's their responsibility back there. Is this better now? Cool. So what you see on this wave are, is first our splash page. You're welcome to visit that. And then a, a list of demos that we'll try to run through through this, uh, uh, through this talk. And uh, in demo one, you could see that it's, it says, uh, enter your hometown here. Uh, some of you are welcome to try that out. It's a very small. Um, it's a very small form that just requires you to put in your first name and your hometown. And we wanted to collect some live data that we'll be able to show later on on the charts. And we wanted to show you how data that's collected from your visitors could be reflected on your website. So we, just, we thought this would be a good opportunity to uh, demonstrate that capability. So just go ahead, fill out that form. It will take you just a second, and hopefully we'll be able to do something meaningful with that data later on. Um, now, I thought that the best place to start would be by um, showing a, a very nice visualization um, that uh, essentially shows uh, tweet patterns across the week. Um, so this is a visualization developed by a, a, one of the users of the, the Google Chart Tools. Uh, how many of you actively tweet, like on a weekly basis? Hands up high, great. How many act actively tweet, like on a daily basis? Wow, that's a good, a nice percentage. How many tweet like more than once a day? Do we have any volunteer here that has a simple tweet, tweet account? What's your name? OK, that's fine. What's your Twitter account? Oh, oh wow. OK, wait just a second. So I'll get to that in one second, OK? but. So Pete will give us his Twitter account. But before we do that, um, I want to show this ni very nice visualization that essentially shows a, how many times you tweet, how many times you got replies for your tweets a, across different days of the week and across different times of, day, of the day. And what we have here is the Twitter account of someone who chose the name God as his Twitter account. And what you can see is that God is a, a, has fairly regular hours. Okay, So he sleeps throughout the night. Uh, he has an uh, 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 intense tweeting a, a pattern through working hours. Maybe towards the evening, he spends some time with the kids, probably tweets a, a little bit less. And then towards the uh, end of the day, a bit before midnight, he tweets a bit more. Okay, so that's the tweeting pattern of a, of a uh, user named God. And what's interesting is that all of this information is available in Twitter, and you could easily a, a, a go through the logs and see you know, when each tweet was created. But a, one visualization could give you a very elegant summary of a, a, of, of a certain pattern that is hidden across all of the, a, all of the different a, a records. So that's the power of a very nice visualization. And a, what we could contrast that is with another, a, is another a, Twitter user, uh, much less active, luckily. He only has 56 tweets uh, across, uh, across the last few years. And, uh, and what you could see is that uh, this Twitter account is uh, mostly active uh, during the night. It uh, has very little activity throughout the day. And uh, luckily for us, gets very little replies. Okay, So that's, a, a, so that's I, would think, I would say, the power of a good visualization that could take data that is publicly available, anyone could see it, but somehow summarizes and presents it in a very effective way. Um, so uh, I won't type in your Twitter account because it's long and scary, but if anyone wants to try this, uh, uh, to try this uh, uh, application out, 
a, it's, it's in our first or second demo on the, on the wave. Cool. So, um, so noticing the, the power of the, of the good visualization is what uh, motivated our team uh, to create uh, this chart tools uh, perspective where we try to develop charts, both for internal use in Google, and then to make them a, a freely accessible to, um, to developers a, a externally. And our mission essentially is to make the world's structured data universally accessible and useful by providing enticing visualizations. So that's, the, that's our team's mission. And what I'll be talking to about today is essentially a, a four components. We'll have four parts in this talk. The first, I'll be talking about image charts. It's a very basic, simple a, a API where a, essentially you ping a Google server with a GET request, a, a simple URL, and you get a PNG back. Okay, so that's the simplest U API that you could imagine for uh, getting a, a chart on your website. Um, and the chart, as I said, is rendered on, on Google servers. Then in the second part, uh, I'll, I'd like to talk a bit about interactive charts um, that are based on a, a JavaScript library and that provide a, a very rich client-side interactive experience to, to your users. Um, and then I'll switch over to Amit, our tech lead, and he'll give you uh, an under-the-hood perspective on how to do this with uh, two or three simple steps. And in the final part, Amit will talk about uh, combining the power of uh, server-side rendering with, uh, uh, with client-side interactivity. OK, so let's start with part one, which is the image charts. And as I said, this is probably the easiest way, if you want to have charts on your website, this is probably the easiest way to do it, is just to ping a, a, a GET request and get a PNG back from our servers. And the way to do this is fairly simple. Here's the server, a chart API is google.com slash chart. And what you see here is essentially the parameters of the chart that you would like to get. I kind of magnified that because it's kind of small to see, but essentially it's very, very straightforward. So the chart size should be 500 by 200 pixels. That's part of your request. The second part is the chart type should be P3, which is, just indicates that it's a 3D pie, pie chart. Uh, the chart data should have a, a 60 for the hello label and then a 40 slice for the world, a, a, for the world a, a label. Okay, so you see you could just send this URL, get an, an image back, and, the, and it's as simple as you could uh, imagine. Um, so here's that very same URL, and notice I'll just click and enter, and here's the chart, and you could put it in, in an image tag and, and, and get the charts, and you could uh, uh, generate these charts dynamically and get a, a different charts. If I want to, say, um, decrease the size of a, or increase the size of, a, of the world part, I could just change the, that percentage, and, and, the, and it changes. So that's very, very simple, very, very uh, user-friendly. And what we started out with is providing a, a gallery of the, the standard charts that you would imagine. So we have a, the bar charts, the line charts, combinations of bar charts and line charts. A, then we progress to provide radar charts, maps, a, a bubble charts, and, and a variety of other charts that, a, that people a, ask for. And, a, and what's nice is that we, were, uh, we are continuously surprised, almost on a daily basis, on the creative use cases that our users uh, uh, make use of this, uh, of this API. So could anyone recognize what's going on here? So I think I heard the right answer, but maybe that will give you a, a, a small hint. So that's the Great Dipper. And what you could see, this is essentially a bubble chart rendered by the chart API, the image chart API. And, uh, and uh, one of our users essentially built a website that you enter your location on, 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 on the planet, and you say, uh, here's the time of the day, and it will give you a perfect rendering of the, of the night sky um, using, the, using the image chart API. Um, and there are a lot, of, a lot of creative use cases, as I said. So the, the standard, the standard uh, procedure with working with the, with the um, image charts is usually to uh, um, play around manually, uh, finding the right chart that you would like to render, maybe playing around a bit with its parameters. And then once you're happy with that result, you usually uh, uh, go to generate that uh, URL programmatically using uh, some PHP and JavaScript uh, uh, wrappers that are available out there. And, um, 
And in order to facilitate this process, what we've uh, just yesterday launched is a, a very straightforward a chart editor, which gives you uh, this, a, a variety of different charts that you might want to choose out of. Say I take this radar chart, and I'm quite happy with this radar chart, but I want to play around with a, a, maybe with a fill. I could you know, change that maybe to a blue fill, maintain some transparency, and um, the output of this editor is a URL that I could just plug into, the, uh, into my browser, and you could see here's, uh, here's the image that I just wanted to. I could play around with the data, obviously, and pretty much with any of the parameters of the chart, and that gives the manual pro prototyping, and then I could go to those PHP and, and JavaScript wrappers that I mentioned earlier on and make sure that uh, live data could be reflected on my, on my website using this, uh, uh, using this API. Um, so we started out, as I said earlier on, with, uh, with focusing on, on charts. And, uh, and what we've done in the last year is we've, we've gradually realized that there are a lot of uh, uh, rendering needs that we could help out using the essentially same, same servers and same, uh, and same interface. And uh, um, we st it, this effort started out with uh, essentially pins for, uh, for Google Maps. Uh, you might have recognized these pins. So they, us they usually have a, a certain, a certain letters or text in them that might uh, vary, and the color might change, and the, and the, uh, the shadow might, might change. So we essentially provided a, a, extended the API to provide what we call dynamic icons. So very often, as a developer, you might need small icons or small uh, visual elements that you want to plug in onto, your, onto our, your map in your site or onto any other element. And what we provide as part of the a chart, a image chart API is this ability to create a dynamic, a dynamic icons. And we have a very rich gallery. We recently added all of the uh, maps of the world. And there are several hundreds of, of other a, a configurable icons that you could play around with. Uh, we also a, added a, a functionality to, to provide QR codes. So if you want a service to provide QR codes, you're welcome to use the service. If you want to uh, use the LaTeX equations, um, you just, you, again, use the exact same APIs I mentioned earlier on. You type in a, a get request, and you could get a, a dynamic LaTeX equation. And, uh, and you could see here some other uh, 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 nice use cases for dynamic icons. So that pretty much sums, the, sum, sums up the, the first part that talks about static images, uh, which are nice. But what we are really excited about is the interactive charts and interactive experiences that we want to provide to our users. So um, uh, what we have here is, is essentially the second, uh, the second API, um, the interactive chart API. And, uh, and it comes with a very rich gallery of, uh, of, uh, of charts. Um, you could see in the top the basic core charts that you would expect, the bar charts, the line charts, the, the, the scatter plots. But then a, a gradually a, we added a, you know, gauges, term clouds, organizational charts. Here in the third line, you could see a charts that you might a, a, a find familiar. So a, a, we have here a, a over an annotated timeline chart that was a, originally developed by Google Finance. Uh, we have here a geomap a chart that was developed by the Google Anal Analytics team um, and is part of the Google Analytics reports. Uh, we have a motion chart that was developed, developed by the Gapminder guys, and we have a, a map charts. Um, and essentially what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say each and every one of these charts probably required several thousands of, of, of hours of engineering work that has been done within Google and has been done mostly for Google needs. Could we somehow wrap it in, in a unified way, in an elegant way, and then give it back to the community so a, a, any one of you could use his own data and present it with, a, with these charts that, a, that are made available? And what we could see on the bottom line is that this community effort is starting to pay back in the sense that the um, protocol that defines the data, we, it's, we have a, a specific data table protocol that we work with, it has been adopted by many other external developers. And on a, on a monthly basis, we get contributions that extend our gallery by external developers that say, hey, I have this new a, a tree map flash a chart, and I would like to add it to your gallery. Are you willing to add it? It complies with the same, a, with the same 
format as, as the, uh, the other charts, and we just add it, and, and we, we gradually get more and more contributions. And what I'm, I'm trying to emphasize here is that this is really a community effort in, a, in trying to have the richest gallery of, of charts available in a, in a free manner for all developers. So we, in the last few months, we tried to uh, take the core charts that were originally developed uh, probably two or three years ago and, and uh, go into a major rewrite of, uh, of, uh, of these charts. Uh, and the first thing that we targeted is the color palette of the charts. And we really did a, a in-depth research into uh, optimizing the, uh, the colors of the, uh, the new colors of, the, of, the, of these core charts. Uh, as you could see here in this, um, in this pie chart. And then the next thing that we targeted is uh, carefully designing the layout of the charts. So we went into this uh, extensive session of uh, optimizing the, the white space versus the uh, uh, central area of the chart. And I think we're very happy with our new layout. It, this has just been launched uh, yesterday. So if you look into our uh, site, uh, you could see that uh, all of our new charts are, are available there with some comparisons to how the charts used to look and, and how they look right now. And I think that you'll see that, they're, um, that they've uh, gone through a, a major uh, revision. Um, one last addition that we've, that we've done is we we're in the process of adding a lot of new functionality. Um, this will come out in the next few weeks. Uh, what, what we could see here is a, a, the, the option of combining line charts, bar charts, area charts, all into, a, all into one a, a scene. So um, in order to demonstrate a, how this rich gallery could work together and how it could be uh, presented and, and essentially uh, do a, a, a major facelift to a website, we built a, a mock website called Backpacky. And uh, it will be integrated into our documentation, so you could you're able to take snippets out of this uh, out of out, out of this website. And Backpacky is essentially a wiki page for backpackers. Okay, so if you're a backpacker, you just came back from Mexico, you want to give some uh, stats about your trip, how much did it cost, uh, who were you traveling with, um, you could just go into this uh, wiki page and and fill out this uh, the textual information, and uh, and the page looks right now just as a plain textual a, a page and, and it's not very exciting. And what I would like to show you in the next few slides is how we could a, a completely change the experience using the appropriate visualizations. So the first thing that you would obviously expect to do is to say, okay, why would I have a textual table of all of the destinations in the world? What I would uh, naturally expect to have is a map that highlights what are the hot destinations right now. Okay, and I want to show you how simple it is to add such a, a visualization to your site. So what we see here on the left-hand side is our code play playground, which is available on, on Google Code. And, um, and what we would like to do is to take this geo map that you see on the left-hand side and just use it to replace that uh, textual list that is kind of boring. And notice that the, the color palette of the backpack is this brownish, nice brownish uh, uh, colors. So, Here's our, um, here's our playground, and you can see that it has a nice um, code snippet for each visualization that you would like. So here's the GeoMap snippet. And what you could see uh, down here on the bottom is a, live version of, of the, um, is a live version of the visualization. And what's misfortunate is that the, the, the GeoMap is right now color-coded with this green color that is completely um, not suitable for backpacking. So what I would do is I'll just go to uh, the HTML snippet and uh, go down to the options part, okay, that draws the geo map. And with a simple change, adding a, the option, which naturally is called colors, I'll try to a, a set the range of, of colors to go from, say, uh, white, all the way to a brownish color. And let's see if that works. Okay, so um, I just go into the code snippet, modify anything that I need in order to get the, the visualization to fit exactly into, a, into the scheme that a, my site presents. And then I'm just copying this snippet, opening a new file here, 
Okay, saving that. And essentially, if I go to test HTML, so I'm trying to open that site. And here's my website with a, with a relevant uh, visualization. Okay, so as you could see, it's just as simple as going into the, into the playground, modifying a few options, and then pasting that, uh, that snippet into your website, and voila, the visualization is there. Okay, so, um, so what you're probably asking right now is, okay, you configured the chart to look the way you want it, but it's not connected to the actual data that I have on my website. So what I wanna show you right now is that that, again, could be done with a two very simple steps. And um, a, how many of you actually filled out the form? That, ooh, quite a lot. Okay, so here's the form that, um, here's the spreadsheet that aggregates all the data that you guys fill. Um, is Raja from Menlo Park here? Hi, Raja. Okay, so, uh, uh, so this is the data that, uh, that was just collected live. And here's the version of, of Backpacky that I mentioned earlier on. And I'll just go to the Friends on Map uh, tab. And what I would like to do is to show whether uh, we could use uh, this visualization in order to find, help Raja find a friend that lives close to Menlo Park and to make sure that if you're a backpacker, you could, uh, you know, you could look around and, uh, and find backpackers in your area. Um, so that's, that's Michael. Let's zoom into here. Uh, so quite a lot, quite a few are from the Bay Area. Uh, is Raja here? Raja, I think we found you a date. So there's Julian that's in, is Julian here? Julian, talk to Raja later on if you wanna go backpacking, okay? So, um, so you could see how live data that was aggregated you know, just a few minutes ago could be tied together into a very uh, compelling visualization that helps people uh, um, um, with the information that they're trying to find. Now what we did is we added to, we added to Backpacky a few, of the, um, a few additional nice uh, visualizations that we've recently added to our gallery. Um, what you could see here is a, a tree map visualization. So a tree map, uh, to those who, who don't know, um, a tree map is a visualization that essentially is aimed at a, a, a d describing information that is a, a, in, a, in a taxonomical structure. And essentially you could say, what are the destinations that guys usually go to and they're kind of color coded here in blue and the size of the rectangle says how many travelers actually go to that destination and you can see that there are countries that are very, that like Cyprus, very few people go to Cyprus but, a, but a, say Malaysia is a much more a, a prominent destination and you have an additional a color that you could kind of indicate where gals are going and where guys are going and, uh, and I think this is a nice, uh, a nice visualization. We also have here an example with uh, prices. Um, one more thing that we, uh, that we have is, um, so here's a, the, the same uh, geo map that we've seen earlier on. And you could see that uh, maybe this month, Mexico is a, is a, is a, a hot destination for people to, uh, to travel in. And what, what I did is I just clicked on Mexico and I could drill down into the next level of resolution which are the regions within Mexico. And I could see that Oaxaca is a very popular destination within, a, within a, a, the backpacker community that's going to Mexico. And what I have here in the bottom part is, as I mentioned earlier on, is a, a, is a, a annotated timeline. A, you might recognize it, it originated from the, the Google Finance team. And uh, I could just uh, zoom into the duration that I want to, uh, to go to Mexico, which is sometime in October. And I could see that in October, I could uh, go to and, and, and catch the independence celebration and that there are two other events that I could uh, play around uh, and visit while I'm, in, uh, while I'm in Mexico. Okay, so this is how visualizations could work together. And then I could drill down into Oaxaca and say, hey, uh, what are the actual treks that people are going through? And I could uh, drill down to the level of actually seeing a map that has, a, that has the, um, the re relevant trek information. And what I have here in the bottom is an altitude map of saying if this is a five day trek, it starts at you know, fairly low and, it, and you go, do you reach a peak um, of, of 3,200 meters? And what, what, what's nice about this is that these charts could work together, okay? So you could just catch the event 
of clicking on any one of these uh, uh, destinations, and the map up on top is, uh, is centra centralized around that, uh, that specific destination. And what I kind of plugged here on the side, if you want to post on your backpacker's motel in the evening, here's the, you know, here are the details of tomorrow's uh, tour. You could just you know, plug it with that same QR code that we saw earlier on generated by the image chart um, API and get kind of a compre comprehensive summary of, uh, of tomorrow's destinations. So um, I think I pretty much covered all of the things I wanted to show in Backpacky. Um, now, the only thing that I had to do in order to connect the uh, data into the spreadsheet that aggregated your information was to take a snippet from, the, from our site. Oops, sorry. Take a snippet from our site, and the only line I have to actually uh, put in in order to hook up to my data is this line, which, as you could imagine, it's just a, a, a query that goes into this specific spreadsheet that's aggregating my specific data. Okay, so that's the, essentially the only change I have to do after I configured the look and feel of the chart uh, to the brownish uh, colors that Backpacky has is to change the data source to be the spreadsheet that I want, and it could be uh, any other data source, as Amit will explain in, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, so that's pretty much uh, my section of the, of the talk, and uh, I want to invite uh, Amit, who is the, our tech lead, and he'll take over from here. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the site for one moment. So what we saw here, uh, <coughs> okay, what we saw here is uh, the demonstration of how we drill down in the geo map between the between the two uh, zoom levels. So we start in the world map in order to see better all the entire world and all the relative uh, volume of uh, travelers in each place. But we want to be able to drill down into a specific zone and see more information about it. So how would you like to implement uh, such a thing when you, when you have the visualization? So basically what we want, we have the data for uh, each of the zoom levels, and we want to travel uh, between uh, the different uh, regions so we, listen, we basically want to listen to the click event of a user on a region and tell the visualization, okay, the user has clicked on some region and you want to step into a specific region to get more information. So let's look at the code. So basically what, this is a part of the real code that uh, is available on the backpacky uh, mock site that uh, you can uh, see later on. So we have basically hold a stack of the current uh, state where we are. So we start in the global scope, and then as, we, as the user uh, push on the region, we simply uh, step into uh, the stack and we add new region. So when we listen to the uh, region click event, we simply push a new region to the stack and redraw the visualization. And of course, we want to be able to zoom out. So we listen to the zoom out event, which is built in into the GeoMap uh, visualization and we pop the last region from the stack and redraw the visualization. So this is a demonstration how you can really uh, be interactive with the chart, even though the chart doesn't uh, support the zoom capability as part of the chart itself. So you can add a new uh, interactions uh, using the JavaScript code instead of the visualization. Okay, so let's, let's have an overview of uh, how uh, this API works in case you have different data sources like Michael showed that uh, in our example we used the Google spreadsheet. So we have the browser and we want to show, show some visualization. So the Google, Google chart tools define some uh, data structure uh, for structured data. We call it data table. And the API is documented uh, on our web page and it's publicly available so everyone can uh, use it. And basically, in the JavaScript code, we create some data table, populate it with the data, and send it to the visualization in order to show it on the web page. But the question is where the, the data come from. So we, as we saw in the playground example, the data is simply uh, hard-coded into the JavaScript code and stored there. But this is not practical, practical for real data for the web page that we have. So what we want to have, we want to take the data from a remote source. So we have the uh, chart tools protocol for query and response. 
And what we saw in the previous slide, we simply had a, a Google spreadsheet uh, request, which has a specific URL, and we get the data uh, directly to uh, our uh, browser. So the question is, where do, where do we manipulate the data? We don't want to have different spreadsheets for each uh, query that we want. And the, we want to be able to extract part of the data to show. For example, in the GeoMap, we wanted to show only the regions of uh, a zoomed-in uh, country and not all, all the map. So for this end, we have a, a query language, which is SQL-like, and it's also part of the protocol. And Google Spreadsheet implement that language. So we can send the spreadsheet a query and ask for a specific part of the table and not get, uh, in order for us not to get the entire uh, spreadsheet. So we can visualize the data. But Google Spreadsheet is only one data source, and obviously users uh, want to have different data sources. So for example, if you have a SQL database or a CSV file that you store the information in, you might want to be able to create your own data source which wraps these databases. So to this end, we have two open source libraries, one in Java and one in Python, that allow, allow you to wrap your data sources and create a simple server that gets a request in our protocol and process the request and return the data. And the library, as I said, has some query language, and the Java library also supports account management. And the question is, if you have, for example, a SQL database, where do you want the query, query to happen? So although the, our query language has the capability to perform select operation and filter operation, it is much more efficient if the operation of the query language happens inside the SQL database, because this is very efficient. And the data doesn't have to uh, trans be transformed from the data to the data source uh, server. So to this end, the Java library also enables, uh, enables to use the dat database native uh, capabilities in order to make the query more efficient. And let's look at some example. Let's say we have some uh, spreadsheet data uh, and, uh, as, as seen below here, and we want to have a query select the department in year, but we want to only take it where the revenues are above 20,000, and we want to order it by uh, the revenue in descending order. So this query is sent from the browser to the remote data source, to the Google spreadsheet, and we take only the subset of the data and send the response back to the browser. If this were a SQL database, we could either do the, uh, we could either apply the query uh, in the Java library or use the SQL uh, native uh, capabilities in order to make it more efficient. Okay, of course, SQL and CSV and Google Spreadsheet are, are uh, strong uh, databases, but obviously user has some other custom databases and you can always use your own database as the backend. So uh, we so even using our library in Java and Python, you can use whatever database you have, but our users also contribute some other languages uh, that you can use, for example, PHP and Ruby and Rails, and you can use whatever library that you want as the protocol is open sourced and is freely used. So this was an overview of how you can connect whatever data source that you have from whatever database that you want in order to show it in the browser for the final user. Okay, so as Michael said, this is a community effort and we want to have, we define some API, which is a common language to, to be shared for all the visualization in order to uh, reduce the number of adjustments that we need to do in order to show visualization from different data sources. So we have the uh, conversion from data sources to our API and we want all the visualization to use our API in order to uh, get the input. So this is, for example, a nice visualization uh, written by WordPress, a ball cloud which uh, the words has uh, different sizes according to the volume uh, that they define here. For example, it's how probably how common these words are. And uh, this is a very nice visualization which is written in Flash. And because it is written in Flash, it uh, accepts its uh, input as, a, as an in XML format to the Flash uh, object. But we want to use this visualization inside our backpacky site. So if I go here to the backpacky site, we can add this visualization that uh, demonstrates what are the most common uh, places to travel in, and it is uh, visualized in a very uh, nice uh, manner. 
So the question is, how can we embed this visualization at, and make it simpler for all the users to embed this visualization who uses our API? So instead of us uh, converting the uh, data table format which we have into the XML, we, have, uh, we, we can write the code once and host it in a public uh, place so that everyone can use it. So a user of uh, the visualization decided to do, is, to do it for us. And here is the code that uh, he wrote. You can see this code in codegoogle.com slash p that he uploaded there. So now everyone can use uh, the visualization uh, if uh, he is using our API. So this code uh, is, uh, has two uh, main parts. The first part is converting the, AP, the our uh, format of a data table into the XML uh, variable. So we can see here it's a very simple code. We go over uh, the rows of the data table and we simply take uh, each, we create, uh, take each row and uh, create an XML tag for it. And uh, in, the, in the green part, we simply embed the visualization and pass it the uh, variable that we just created. So using this code, you can see that the, this visualization is here and all we needed to do is change the name of the visualization since the data was already in our format, so the change was very simple. So this is an example how we can take from the community a visualization which was open sourced and freely and can freely be used, and we only need to add a small part uh, to make it uh, accessible to all our users who uses our API. Okay. Okay. So the last part of the talk is about uh, server side rendering and the client side interactivity. So we saw the uh, server side, uh, the charts API, and uh, uh, also the interactive charts, and we want to compare uh, the two uh, APIs that we have. So obviously the image charts are static images and they have no interactivity versus the interactive charts, which can really enhance the user experience by adding interactivity. So it, it uh, as a nice experience of exploring the data uh, interactively. The API for the image chart is uh, only URL. You just give a URL and get the image which is very simple and uh, portable. And the interactive chart, you have very basic JavaScript code. As you saw, uh, you take from the playground, just copy paste the code and embed it in your page. The, one of the advantages of the server side uh, image chart is it is very fast. This is very fast because uh, two advantages. One, this is run on the Google servers uh, in C++ code, and uh, it is also cached. So if two users uh, request the same image, the same chart, we simply uh, comp compute it once and send the result back uh, from the cached version. And in the interactive charts, you, the, the data remains on the client side. You don't have to send the, the, to send the data, and the, all the rendering is done uh, locally, and you can uh, moreover manipulate the data. You can sort and group and do whatever you want with the data before visualizing it, and it is very simple. But uh, in the last year, we wanted to combine the two efforts and to make it uh, even better, to, to enhance the user experience with server-side rendering and client-side interactivity. And what do I mean by that? So, there are some visualizations which are uh, very computational intense and so th that requires the, the server to render the, the visualization. However, we don't want to lose the interactivity only because the rendering is very uh, intensive uh, computational-wise. So how we can combine the two? We can make a JavaScript in the client-side visualization which make a request to the server only to get the layout to do the complex part of the computation. And then in the JavaScript side, we can do, visualize the data and add the interactivity. So one of these uh, examples is the GeoMap that uh, we already saw before. So the GeoMap also has a very deep down metro level zoom uh, of the United States. So this uh, zoom has very uh, large amount of polygons and these polygons cannot be computed on the client side and we even prefer, prefer not to store them on the client side if we don't need them. So this is an example of uh, such a combination of the server side rendering and the client side interactivity. Sorry. When uh, the, the client side re send a request to the server uh, with which uh, polygons it needs, and the server returns back the polygon that the client side uh, should uh, uh, draw, 
And this way, we get the, the benefits of the two worlds. We can do a heavy computation and still get the interactivity on the client side to enhance the user experience. Another example, which is very new, which we just uh, uh, still a bit in experimental stages, is having a, is called the graph viz. So graph layouting problem is a very difficult problem. Uh, basically, the problem indicates that we give you some restrictions, for example, on a network or a social graph, and we say uh, uh, which two uh, items are connected in an edge, and if there is some restriction on the edge. And we want to know how to lay out these nodes, these items, in the two-dimensional space so it would be uh, optimized, highly optimized uh, space. So there would, no, there would be as few edges as possible that uh, cut one another or even nodes that overlap one another. So this uh, problem is uh, very difficult, and there it was researched for a long time. And there are very uh, strong libraries that uh, do this computation uh, for us. And they are also publicly available and uh, open sourced. So what we did, we simply wrapped using the charts API uh, the rendering of the, this, this image. So you, send, you basically send the server uh, in some specific format the restrictions that you have on the graph. And you get in return two things. The first thing that you get is an image of the chart, as you can see here. But the th second thing that you get is the layout. So you know each node where it is located and what is the value of the node. So let's go back to our backpacky site. And if you want to see our social graph here, so you see the image that we just saw in the presentation that we take from the server. But when I hover over a node, I can also add some interactivity to it and show the image of uh, that uh, person. So obviously, this is not exactly me. But uh, you can see here pictures of uh, people from our office. So we, get, uh, we combine the server side uh, power in order to uh, solve the layout uh, uh, problem of a graph, and we add the client-side interactivity to enhance the user experience. So th this is uh, one of the approaches that we take in order to make the experience better in the future development of the Google Chart Tools. So let's summarize what uh, we saw. We basically saw a very rich gallery of visualization, both in the image charts API and the interactive charts uh, that are free of charge. You can use them wherever you want, even in the commercial uh, software. They are highly customizable. As you saw, we can change the colors and the uh, size of the charts uh, in order to embed them uh, whenever we want to, to make the experience of the site complete and don't make the visualization alien in, the, in your site. We have both interactive playground for the uh, interactive visualization and the image uh, chart editor for the charts API. So you can customize and play with the uh, visualization before you embed it in your site and to uh, optimally choose which visualization you want to use. We have an active developer group that we answer emails uh, on a daily basis, so you can send your questions there. And uh, we saw how to take uh, the data from whatever data source that you want in order to connect uh, the visualization to the real data that you have. The charts are very easy to use, and uh, you can see the documentation uh, that we have. In order to find documentation, you can simply search for Google Charts and see our documentation. So you have here both the uh, image charts and the interactive charts, and you have side-by-side -side comparison to know which uh, one of them you should choose uh, in order to embed in your site. Uh, I just want to show one more example in the uh, I just wanted to add that in the tree map visualization, uh, you can also drill down into uh, uh, the area. So you can also. Uh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> the data is here not complete. The, this uh, entire site is uh, with uh, mock data, so uh, not everything uh, exactly present the real information, but only to demonstrate the power of the visualization. So that's about it. And uh, if you have questions, we would be happy to answer. Hello. Hey, 
Uh, so can you clarify the difference between the Google Charts API and the Google Visu Visualizations API? Is, there, is that just a rebranding, or is that, uh, you know, what's the difference? OK, so the Charts API is basically uh, using uh, our URL-based charts. So you uh, send the URL and get an image back. And the Visualization API is uh, what we discussed, the connection between the visualization, the browser, and the remote data source. So, uh, the, the, so this, the, this is basically the difference. So the visualization API is the public protocol that allows you to send a request and get a response with the data. Uh, so, OK, so my first question is, um, I, I've, I've used the visualization API. And uh, like one thing I found frustrating was dealing with the data table uh, object. Because it's, I don't know, it's kind of like obtuse. And like, if you want to go ahead and if you want to do something like change uh, the data at runtime, like say you have an annotated timeline and you want to say display a completely different set of annotations uh, with the same data that you already have, uh, is there any easy way to do that? Or So let me understand if I, so the question is, can we change the data in the data table dynamically? Uh, yeah. Or is there an easy way to do that? I, I yeah. found that I could do that, but. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so like the way that I ended up doing it was just walking through all the data points and uh, then changing the annotation if I have a new one, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the data table itself is uh, an object that you have inside your JavaScript code, and you can modify it uh, either by going cell by cell and, and changing it, or you can also have something called data view. And so you can apply a view on a data table and ask for a specific uh, filters to happen. So you can set only subset to see only subset of the rows or subset of the columns, or you can uh, apply some function. So you want to have a computed column that is uh, the result of applying a function on each of the rows. So I hope that answers your question. Hmm. I, I don't know. I, I won't waste too much time with that. Well, the other question I had, by the way, was um, like, uh, let's see. At my company, I can't use the chart API because of legal reasons about letting data out, uh, because we would be putting the data into the URL. Um, that's private information. Uh, is is there any like like way to do use a rendering API for like static charts that don't use Flash but without posting data to a remote source? So most of our uh, interactive visualization don't send the data back to the servers. And obviously, the visualization that uses the Charts API must send the data to the server because it yeah. renders it. So uh, and every visualization that we have in the documentation, it says explicitly what is the data policy and if the, uh, the information is sent to the server or not. Yeah. So My question is, is, is there one that doesn't use Flash? <laughs> yeah, there are uh, uh, But also doesn't post data. Yeah, so the interactive visualization, most of them are written in uh, HTML5 technology, uh, okay. namely SVG for, uh, internet, uh, for uh, browser which are not Internet Explorer, and uh, VML for uh, IE. And uh, most of the interactive charts are, are of this form, and they don't send the data, and they're not in Flash. Do you know if the annotated timelines one is available in HTML5 yet? So the annotated timeline is currently in Flash, but we hope that in the next few quarters we would be able to supply some alternatives which does not use Flash. Thank you. It's been a while since, whoops. OK, it's been a while since I used the uh, Charts API, um, but this has kind of inspired me. I have a complicated data set, and I, I'm familiar with communicating with the API using GET requests, OK? That's easy enough. But if I have a complicated data set, I'm just ultimately going to overrun what I can put in a GET request. Is there some sort of way that I can kind of say, go look at this spreadsheet or something like that in my GET request, or, or am I going to have to think of another way to do this? OK, that's, that's a great question. Uh, so currently, we don't have uh, a way to specify in the Charts API to fetch the data from uh, a third uh, location. However, we do uh, allow you to do a post request. And we even uh, wrap it for you. In, in the interactive charts, uh, there is uh, something that are wrapping for most of the, for some specific uh, charts, uh, like the bar chart, we, you have uh, an a image version of the bar chart where you can, we automatically send it using post if the URL is long enough. And uh, we have a generic image chart uh, a visualization which allows you to 
essentially do whatever you like with the charts API, and we wrap it in the post rec request for you if it's uh, too long. And so if I go to the site, I'll be able to yeah, see all this. Yeah, just search Great. for Google Charts, and you will see. Gotcha. Thanks. No problem. OK, a little bit of <clears throat> uh, same question that was asked a second ago, but a little different spin. Um, the APIs, they're all basically you have to have an internet connection to use them. Um, is there any plan in the future to maybe bundle these up in an SDK, either the Android SDK or the GWT SDK? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So currently, there is no plan to uh, change the policy, and we uh, will currently only allow to use it dynamically and load the, the, the current version that we hold. OK. Maybe I could add, maybe I could add a word uh, about that. Um, so I think our motivation behind that policy is uh, we, we really want to uh, change these uh, charts and, and augment the gallery on, uh, as I said earlier on, like on a weekly and monthly basis. So, um, so right now we were motivated to have like one version of the library that's, uh, that we have a loader which, you, which is very fast and efficient and provides it if, if you do have internet access. Once we will have to work with many versions, I mean, if we go to the offline scenario and there are many live versions out there and there are many uh, uh, maybe bugs that were fixed but that are being used by older versions, um, it kind of bogs us down in our capability to make rapid changes and, and to provide new functionality. If, however, the, that use case will surface as a major use case for you know, many people, whether it's on the mobile a, a community or any other community, we'll obviously reconsider that decision. But currently, that's our, that's our policy. Do you have a place where we can see a roadmap? Roadmap. Feature. I didn't hear. Sorry. Roadmap. Do we have a place where you can see a roadmap? Do you, yeah, do you have plans have, to publish a roadmap? Um, so, so obviously internally we have, you know, we have a roadmap that we're working by. A, a, so we, we usually are, are somewhat hesitant about a, exposing this a, externally just, you know, just a, a, to a tune expectations. But what I could say as a strategy is that we're, a, we're a committed to, a, a, to, as Amit mentioned earlier on, to a, gradually migrate towards HTML5 and make sure that a large percentage of our gallery is available on purely HTML5 a, a visualizations. Um, and the, I think that's kind of a, one major strategy. Uh, another one is to, a, is to a, as Amit said earlier on, is to try to see where server-side rendering and, and sophisticated layout engines could provide clients a, 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 the, kind of a backend that is shipped over to the client and then augmented with client-side interactivity. So we saw a, a highly detailed geo maps a, that do that already. We saw this a new approach with Graphis that has the layout calculated in the back end and then shipped to the client side. And we'll be trying to do more of, more of those. And I think that's where um, our strength as Google that has both, uh, both server side servering serving and, 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 and this JavaScript library could, could really come into play. And my last question is, um, do you have any suggestions for dealing with large data sets? Or is that just not an option right now? So the question was if we have too a strategy to, to deal with the process on the client. What? I, data set, large data set as in too large to process on the client. OK. So do we have a plan to strategy to uh, maintain uh, data sets which are larger, larger than the client can hold? So uh, I think that uh, a visualization, a single visualization cannot really represent uh, something that the client cannot hold uh, inside. So if you write, if you choose the proper visualization, I think that you could be uh, able to refine the data for the visualization to really be uh, small enough in order to handle it in the client side. And I guess that my suggestion is that to uh, make the, all the data manipulation either in the uh, remote data source or in the database itself in order to really ship to the client uh, the small essence of the visualization that you want to eventually see uh, in the browser. Uh, I, I guess uh, you've um, potentially answered this question already. Uh, are you planning to add things like being able to scale maps and regions of maps based on data um, so that you can do uh, 
uh, you know, areas that have large populations show up large and areas that have small populations are, are smaller even if they um, are geographically large. Uh, is that something you're, you're thinking of doing or? Uh, that wasn't on our immediate roadmap, but uh, I, you're not the first to ask for that, so we might reconsider and, uh, and add that as you know, the, the next visualization that will come out in the next two or three months. Uh, and in a, in a similar vein, um, in the uh, visual display of quantitative information, Edward Tuft goes a bit further in removing pixels, particularly from, from um, ac graph axes, mm -hmm. and just showing the ticks on data points. Um, that's something I've always wanted to see, but I've never found a graphing package that will do it. Um, would you be uh, interested in considering that as an option as well? So there was actually a blog post uh, about two weeks ago that shows how Tufts recommendations could be fully, um, fully re uh, implemented using the chart API. Um, our new look and feel for the interactive charts is uh, very much inspired by, by, by Tufts uh, recommendations. Uh, there are a few places where we, you know, we decided to do things differently, but, um, but we'll try to add more and more a functionality that like, gives you options to kind of minimalize the chart if you run, really want to see only the, the crisp version of the data. Okay, thank you. I, ju I just want to mention uh, that we have an issue tracker and uh, the active user group, so if you have requests, it is uh, best to put them there so we have some documentation and we can remember uh, what the user really wants for us to implement. Are there any plans for a GWT library? For what? GWT. GWT. Oh, OK. So uh, the, the, these charts, are mo most of the charts uh, are already GWT uh, integrated. And we also have, have in the documentation some uh, link uh, saying which charts are uh, GWT integrated. And we try to uh, in extend the GWT support that we have uh, for new charts that we add. And uh, please feel free to send us a request if you have a visualization that you want to use, and they are not uh, GWT enabled. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. See you.